Correlational studies and experimental studies both focus on using mathematical statistical analyses to examine hypotheses. But what if we're interested in the subjective experience of people? In that case, we might want to use qualitative methods. So, a good quantitative question, for example, would be something like, does being exposed to television violence result in higher levels of aggression in people with schizophrenia? That would be a great quantitative question. We can do an experiment on that. But if we're looking at somebody's subjective experience, that might not be as easily um, examined through an, a, a traditional experiment. So for example, if we were looking at the question, what is it like to experience auditory hallucinations? What, this, what is the subjective experience of that like? We might instead rely on qualitative methods. Although there are many different kinds of qualitative methods, all of them rely on the same five steps. They all require the collection of verbal data, interviewing participants and, and getting their stories. They all involve reading the data in some kind of systematic way. And then they involve breaking the data into parts. The data is organized and expressed from a disciplinary perspective. And finally, the data is synthesized or summarized in some kind of meaningful way. Phenomenological analysis is rooted in phenomenological philosophy. And the idea is to describe the essence of something by setting aside biases and preconceptions uh, while we're studying people's conscious experience. And when we talk about conscious experience, it's characterized by something that the phenomenologists refer to as intentionality. Intentionality is the idea that mental events refer to or intend something in the world. And what we try to do as researchers when we're doing phenomenological research is we try to set aside our biases and study our, our participants' conscious experience to get at essences of things in the world. The phenomenological reduction involves three steps. The first step is called bracketing. Bracketing involves the researcher laying aside uh, taken for granted beliefs about the world and what's being studied. That is, there, there's an effort to shift one's view from understandings that mirror the world to the view that objects present themselves to us and we have to interpretively make sense of them. Step two involves description. The researcher obtains descriptions of what's being studied from participants. Right? We get participants to tell their stories. And then the third and final step is the search for essences. What we try to do is we try to take these participant descriptions and break them down into meaningful units right, that cut across different people's descriptions. And we look for commonalities across the participants. And then the results are considered the essences of what's being studied. The essence, for example, of the experience of, of having hallucinations is something that we might, we might get at at the end of a phenomenological research study. When it comes to the validity of qualitative methods, qualitative researchers often assess the trustworthiness of their results. What is its social validity? To what extent does it seem to validly account for people's social experience? Um, does it acknowledge its biases? Does it try to look and say what possible biases could have influenced these results? And does it note them and talk about them? And does it provide adequate data that can help us legitimately understand the experience of what it is we're studying?